Hello, Heart Revolution family. Welcome to The Breakdown. I'm super excited to be here today. I have some of the most amazing, most incredible people joining me today. But before I get into introducing them, I just want to say that this last Sunday was one of the most amazing Sundays ever. Pastor Abe preached a powerful message. Then we had our grand opening to our home coffee, the best coffee ever. Thank you, David. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you to all the team. Fantastic job. And then to end the night, we had Bishop Trout. So for me, it was like a double treat. I don't know about you guys, but Pastor Abe killed it. Bishop Trout killed it. And that was an amazing night. Church at night is so incredible. But now I'm super excited to introduce my guest today. We have Erica, we have Catfree, and we have the one and only Pastor Angela. So before we start, we're going to do an icebreaker. So I have a few questions for you guys. First, we'll do Catfree. I know you love motorcycles. So if you can buy a motorcycle and money wasn't an issue, what motorcycle would you buy? Um, definitely would be either the Kawasaki H2 or the uh, BMW RRS 1000, both of those. And um, yeah, I, I, I love fast things on two wheels. So. Come on, and look at you, you look good. Look at those tennis shoes, come on somebody. Put my leg down. And, and Erica, for you is, if you had a choice to be rich or famous, uh, which one would you pick and why? Rich. When it comes to being able to have finances, I, the way I see it, I could bless people and I could be anonymous with it. Um, mm -hmm. I think when you're famous, um, it's too, it could be too much hype, you know, too much, you gotta, you know, look good, perform, you know what I mean? But when you just have money, you know, you just roll in, you do what you gotta do, nobody knows you, um, but you could bless people, you know, I, and actually it's some of our dreams to be able to, you know, hey, mm -hmm. Tip someone what they would make in a month or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so definitely rich. That's so awesome. And Pastor Angela, and I hope I don't get in trouble for asking you this, but I'm just going to ask it, all right? So if you could pick one rap artist from the 90s, oh, man. who would you pick, oh, Tupac or Biggie? Uh, that, is, that is a <laughs> hard one because I'm from the West Coast, but Come I got on. so much love for Biggie. Um, I'll say this, uh, I actually won tickets uh, back in the day to go see Biggie in concert. Oh. I never got a chance to see Tupac in concert, but being able to see him in concert was epic. So um, yeah, I, I would say him. Wow, that's Brooklyn awesome. Stand -up. And I'll introduce myself. My name is Oscar, and I'm super excited to introduce them. And we're going to get started. Um, so Pastor Abe preached a, a message, a very powerful message, and it was titled The Power of Pain. Um, I think that a lot of people think that when we become Christians that, that, we, that Jesus just comes out of, out of nowhere and takes away the pain, but that's not true. Um, what makes us and what builds us as men and women of God is the pain that we've gone through. I've gone through pain. You guys have gone through pain. Um, and Pastor A read out of the book of James. And I love the book of James because that is the only book that doesn't have greeting. So everything else, Paul always addresses the church greeting. But this one, James goes right into it and right away starts talking to the church. And I love the book of James. And who else to teach us than the brother of Jesus, which is James. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. And I'm old school, guys. I do have a Bible. I know that all of you guys have your iPhones, but I'm old school. So I'm going to read my Bible from, from uh, James. So James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it pure joy. For you know that when your faith is being tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when you endorse is fully developed, you, you will be perfect and complete, needing and nothing. Wow. Um, it's crazy that uh, Pastor Abe preached the message right now about pain. I feel like, well, in my generation, um, I'm 39 years old, and 2020 has been one of the craziest years ever where, um, you know, it's been close to home. I actually know people that have had COVID. Um, uh, I've, I know of people that know somebody that died, that lost their job. And, and, and right now, I think that we as Christians, 
are going through some painful stuff, but at the same time, the, 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 the joy of God is with us. And I want to ask you guys a few questions, and I'm going to start with uh, Pastor Angela. So uh, the first point was pain will purify your, your priorities. Pain will purify your priorities. And Pastor Angela, tell us about a time that your faith was tested. Oh, man. I feel like from the moment I got saved, God was already putting me to the test of my faith. Um, do you love me? Do you trust me? I feel like that's what the question he was always asking me. Um, something that first comes to mind is when I first got saved, um, I actually grew up Catholic. So I came from a different religious background. Um, and growing up in my family, it was like, Mexican pride and Catholic pride. And the moment that I decided to come to a church that wasn't Catholic, it was almost like I was denouncing my last name or my heritage. And my family had a really hard time with that. And I remember they, they made me feel bad. They made me feel bad about coming to church, about coming to this church where I met Jesus and, and started growing this real relationship with him. And I felt like, God, if this is, if this is you, if this is so good, how come I'm getting all this heat from my family? Um, and I'll never forget when he had me call my pastor and she just told me, you know what, Angela, don't give up and don't stop showing up. Just trust God and have faith. Be consistent. And that's what I did. God tested my faith in that moment. It was either am I going to listen to the very prominent year, uh, words of my family, which whom I usually hold dearly and I admire my family, or am I going to listen and cling to the word of God? That's a hard thing to do, especially in your early 20s when you're trying to figure out who you are. Yeah. You, you cling to whatever your mom and your dad and your grandma and your nana and tata say because they raised you. Yeah. When the moment comes when you're challenged to how you were raised and how God's saying you should be, it's put into question. It's like it's so hard to make the choice, but the choice always has to be him. Um, time and time again, but just keep showing up, keep being consistent. Those were the words that I clung to in when it came to standing on my faith. Wow, that's so awesome. I love what you said about being consistent. I feel like a lot of times when the trials come, when the storm comes, we're, we're, you know, if you're not ready, you're easily withered and you easily can walk the other direction. But the thing about being Christians is the consistency, like when things are bad, when things are good, and being consistent. So I love that. And um, you're a pastor that I admire. You and your husband mean the world to me. Thank so, you. you know, for all the young people out there, you know, consistency. And, and I love that. Um, pastor Abe said something that was very powerful. And as he said, some of the biggest blessings did not come from the easy times. They come from the hard times. And, and, and I, and I want to ask uh, Caffrey, when, when, when we run from pain, we run from our purpose. Have you ever ran from pain? And if so, when did you decide to stop running and face it head on? Uh, that's a great, great question. Um, so we, uh, we came to church. Well, actually, I'll say for myself. I came to church broken and in pain. Um, that's the reason why we ended up here. Um, we lost our daughter. And, um, you know, we, my wife decided to, to get back into faith and really started practicing and really started walking it out. I mean, there were mornings I would wake up or nights and my wife would, be, would have a hand on me, praying over me, hoping that I came, came to uh, that realization that, that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. So, um, but I was so stubborn, so reluctant, and um, I ran away from things because the pain was so much to bear once we lost our daughter. It even became a time where I questioned if our marriage was going to work out because she was changing in front of my eyes. She was like coming up with all these, hey, I'm doing this now. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And, and I'm like, well, this is not the same woman that I know. Like we listen to, you know, Biggie, right? We listen, <laughs> like every time we get in the car, I put on some big. She didn't want to listen to that anymore. Um, you know, late nights doing stuff that we weren't supposed to do. Um, you know, uh, right, we weren't married yet at the time. Um, you, know, you know, having premarital sex, stuff like that. She said, um, we can't do that anymore. Wow. Wow. And I'm like, well, this is not the girl I knew. So, um, you know, all the praying, I think all that praying helped. And then, you know, it just took me showing up to church one day. I stopped running for so long 
waking up on Sunday, watching her go out the door to go to church. I'm sitting on the couch watching the games, watching her come home. And it took months of that for me to actually come one time. And then it, it, I didn't come all at once. I used to show up right when the pastor was speaking. I didn't want to hear all the praise and worship. I'm not here for that. I want to hear right when he spoke. And as soon as he got done speaking, I was out the door on my motorcycle back home. And it took that. And then it took, you know, me coming through the door one day and, and Rock, you know, you know um, Jesse grabbing me and saying, I want you standing next to your wife. And then something inside of me was just like, okay, I'll do it. I, it was reluctant, but I did it. Just like Pastor Angela said, you just have to show up and let the work of God work on you, work on your heart. Once you show up, things start changing. Wow. And then I started changing. And then that, we turned that pain into something so powerful because then we were a revelation for so many other people, people that we've met that listen to our story, people that we've brought to church. Like every time we go out and we speak to somebody, we, we tell them about the glory of God. We tell them about our church and we invite them. So just that pain, instead of running from it, we, we embraced it and then we turned it into something great. Wow. Wow, that's so awesome. And Jesse, wherever you are, we love you. We love your muscles. You're the man. Um, you know what, Caffrey and Erica, I, I just want to say that I admire you guys. Um, I see your commitment to each other, to God. Um, you guys are prayer warriors. You guys uh, come early. You guys are praying outside of the church. Um, when we had downtown, you guys were praying in downtown. And I just want to let you guys know that that is an inspiration for me uh, in my marriage. And when I look at you guys, you guys inspire me. I love you guys so much. Um, and Thank just you. your story and uh, to hear, like, even after your daughter, like, I wouldn't even know what I would do. It's with my kids if something happened to them. So um, through that pain, you found your God and you found your yes. Jesus. And and it's so crazy because when I see you guys and even Erica, she's on fire. Mm -hmm. And she loves people. She's and she, and, she <laughs> and you know, she, she, she grabs something that, that, that is inspirational. Yes. And the love for people that just to meet somebody at Target yep. and share the gospel mm -hmm. is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's, that's what cool. fires me yeah. up. That's what gets me going. And I love that. Erica, let me ask you. Um, what were some of the biggest hard times you had to go through before you had your blessing? Um, hmm. So definitely one of them is obviously, you know, the passing of our daughter. Um, and, you know, Pastor Abe at, on, the, um, on Sunday talked about how, um, you know, the bigger your struggle, the bigger your blessing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's so true. And so, you know, my upbringing wasn't the greatest, you know, bouncing around from house to house, you know, this parent has this issue, that parent has that issue. Um, and obviously, you know, being a child, you kind of soak that in and whatnot. Um, and I was, you know, I, I, I was pretty much kind of an adult at 14, you know, and having to kind of navigate, you know, what's right and wrong and things like that. And um, my grandmother, uh, I give, oh my goodness, like, I, like, that's my, I love her. Um, she was just always so, like, level-headed, calm. Like, I would be out till, I, I, there was one night, I'm like 15, 16 years old, I got home at 6 in the morning. She didn't scold me, she didn't say anything, but she prayed all the time. I saw her all the time on her knees, in the morning, in the evening, whenever. Um, so I know that, you know, me making it through my childhood and coming to where I am today has so much to do with her prayers and obviously ultimately God, because wow. all the stuff that I got into drinking, all that craziness, God had his hand on me. There's no way that he didn't have his hand on me. Um, and then, so that was obviously, you know, the upbringing, my upbringing was tough. Um, and then obviously with Bea, uh, tough, but it, it, to get a, to get a breakthrough, you have to be broken at some point. Like, so welcoming the brokenness, honestly, it, it, it's crazy because even doing this breakdown, I kind of felt like, you know what? I don't think I'm, I'm, I should be on there because I feel like I'm in a season of brokenness right now. <laughs> but you know what? God was like, hold on a second. A lot of the times I think us as leaders, and this is coming from my, my brain, and it's kind of embarrassing, you know, like even to, to admit it, but you think you're above it sometimes. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I shouldn't be going through this. Like, I, I know what to do. I know how to get in my word. I know how to, and, uh, you know, shout out to Vanessa. I love you so much. Well, come on, um, Vanessa. You know, and this is why it's important to get in a life group. 
just saying, uh -huh, come on. Um, and to have leaders. But, you know, I called her, and she has two kids, and she's married. So she has, you know, her ministry of her family, and she's up with me at 10 o'clock at night. Come on. You know, talking to me and helping me through my stuff. And so, you know, just because you're a leader doesn't mean you don't go through stuff. And, you know, she, you know, shed some light in saying, okay, well, you know, if you're supposed to reach another level, you have to go through another level of pain. Wow. Like, you, you wow. know, a new level of blessing requires a new level of pain. And I'm at a point where I'm like, oh, I need to understand it. I need clarity. And Pastor A was like, when he said uh, in the word, um... If you if you understand it, it it's not going to require faith. <laughs> okay. Come on. Yep. All right. Um, and so you know, just understanding that even as a leader, you're going to go through pain. You have to face it. You have to overcome it because it's not about you. Yeah. It's about the people that you're going to bless with your breakthrough. You know. So that's anyway. Okay. Wow, that's so good. And you know what? I love that because a lot of times as leaders, um, we think that just because we have a leadership position that the pain or, or the struggle doesn't apply to us no more, but that's not true. Um, as a matter of fact, I feel like as leaders, you're gonna go through more pain, you're gonna go through more struggles. And, and later on, I'm gonna talk about that when Pastor Abe talks about the platform, but um, as leaders, we have to go through it. And that's what refines us, that's what molds us, that's what makes us the leaders that we are, is that God will, you know, it's like Pastor says, um, he doesn't ordain it, but he allows it for us to make us better. Um, and that brings me to, this, to the second point that Pastor was talking about, and is pain will change your capacity. Mm. And you said it well. Um, you know, a lot of times, we, the reason, and this is me speaking personally, is the reason that we struggle when we get to the next is because we're not willing to let go mm. of the past. And if we do let go of the past, we let go of the past in partials. Mm -hmm. And when we don't give it to God, and don't give it to God completely and trust him completely, then that is the reason that it carries on with us to the next. And it doesn't allow for God to have that capacity with us. Yeah. And if God does bless us, then we're overwhelmed and we're like, oh, my gosh. You know what I mean? So, so it's really, and I encourage you guys, you know, uh, if, let go of the past. Don't bring the past with you. And I promise you, God will begin to, uh, to just make your capacity so much more larger. Um, and I want to ask Pastor Angela, um, and Pastor Abe was talking about breaking walls down. And what, will, and what walls do we have that we haven't broke down? Um, and Pastor Angela, tell us about a wall that you had to break down, and how did you handle the pain? Oh, man. I think... Uh I think a lot of women deal with that wall of insecurity, not knowing like who they are, um, not recognizing how God sees them and how valuable they are. Um, that was a huge wall that I felt like little by little God was chipping away at it, chipping away at it. And I felt like I kept picking up the bricks and putting it back, back together. You know, it's like I just didn't buy the fact that I, that I was cool, that I was worthy, that I was loved, that I was worth it. That, um, that I was all that in his eyes. Um, and I grew, up, I grew up okay. I grew up with a family that loved me. Um, I, yeah, I grew up in a broken family, but I had a big family. I had lots of family members that took care of me and rallied around me and my family. So I grew up okay. So it wasn't like I, I grew up not valuing a worth ethic or valuing education, but I never grew up feeling a sense of who I was and, and how important I was as an individual until I came to God. Um, and then I realized there was that wall there. I remember this lady, I'll never forget, I walked into the doors of this church and she hugged me and she told me, you're so beautiful. And no one had ever told me that before. Yeah. Not my mom, not my, not my dad when he was around, not even like my grandparents who I know love me. Well, you're gorgeous, just want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No one ever said that. Yes. She was like the yes. first person that said that to me in that way. And I just was taken aback. And then over the years, every time I'd show up to church here on Sunday, that lady, she didn't know me. This lady would just hug me like any other greeter yes. would at our church, yes. handshake me, grab me in. And she'd always whisper me, you are so beautiful, Angela. And I'd be like, why does she keep telling me that? And it was God trying to tell me how he saw me. Yeah. But yeah. that wall of insecurity was so thick. And at times, because I just didn't buy it, I was like, yeah, I don't know what, what's going on. But she was 
just God was using her to chip away at that wall of knowing who I was and seeing myself in the eyes of God. Wow. Um, and, and it was painful because it was painful to realize that I had a really bad self-image of myself. Um, and I was, I was in the dark of not knowing how awesome God made me and not appreciating it and not walking in it. You know, and I was letting other people um, not talk to me or notice me, and I wouldn't engage with people because of my insecurities. And the moment God used that woman to start breaking things down like that in my life, um, I started being more open to people. Wow. And little by little, I stopped being so insecure, um, and it wasn't so painful. I, like, started to actually take him at his word, you know, and really buy what God says about me. Amen. Wow, that's so awesome, Pastor, and I love it because... That lady, whoever she is, wherever you are, we love you. Um, her obedience and her love for God made an impact in your life. And, um, you know, a lot of times when we come to church and we get saved and we're killing it or whatever it is, I, we kind of forget that there's still people out there that need Jesus. Yes. And, but if we all had the heart of that lady and we came to church knowing that our mission is to, is to no matter what we're going through, to be able to speak to somebody and right. encourage somebody, we don't know that that's going to be the moment that God uses us to help that person. Yeah. And I love that. And, and I want to encourage you, like, when you come to church, you know, come and get your word from God, but also meet people, talk to people, invite people. The, 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 the church, it wasn't meant just for us. Right. It's for everybody out there. And I want to encourage you to do that. So, Pastor, thank you for sharing. Um, Catherine and Erica, um, I want to ask you a question as a married couple. Um, has there ever been a moment when pain has challenged your capacity? Uh, definitely. Um, <laughs> I think, of course, I think pain is part of life. Um, I mean, even, you know, something as simple as I want to get in shape, right? I mean, you go to the gym and that first time it's painful is because your muscles are being stretched, right? Um, a rubber band, a rubber band is being stretched. Uh, that's the only way it's useful. A rubber band isn't useful if it's, just, if it's not stretched. So it's open and, and you're, you're actually expanding its capacity at that point. Relationships are the same way. And I think um, for us, uh, I think a lot of people or even Christians have a tendency to do is, um, what we do is once, once we start feeling the pain or we start feeling a load, what we do is we go to God and say, hey, God, please lighten this load. That's the wrong thing we should be asking God. We should be asking God to strengthen our backs. That's good. Yeah, right? That's, good. that's what we should be that's praying good. for because when he strengthens your backs, that means you could take on more. If you just lighten your load all the time, you're never going to grow. Yeah. You're never yeah. going to stretch. That's so good. once we understood that, because my whole life has been like, this is a lot, and then you put stuff off. You take stuff off your plate. So you've never actually expanded your capacity. You stay in the same position. So we started to pray to ask God wow. to strengthen our backs so we could handle what you're putting on us. Wow. And, that's, wow. and that's been a, a great thing for us. But. Wow. And I mean, like, to, to tack on to what Caffrey just said, it's like how what I mentioned, our pain is not for us, you know? And I think that a lot of the times we can get so like wrapped up in like, oh, well, our marriage ain't going right. You know, the marriage isn't good. So, you know, I'm not about to serve on Sunday. Like, you know, you, you come up with all these excuses yeah. because you're so self like absorbed, yeah. you know? And when you put the focus on other people, it, it's, it's, it's like, God is just so good where he's like, okay, you know what? Well, I'm going to show you your favor because of your faithfulness to my house and to my people. And so, you know, what you're going through with your husband, you know, what you, what my husband's going through with me because I'm a lot, um, <laughs> you know, is to bless other people because how are we going to talk to, you know, a couple who's struggling if we never struggled? Yeah. You know, how are we going to say, oh, you know what? You're going to get through this, um, you know, without us having to have some stuff to get through. And so um, just realizing that, you know, whenever we go through pain um, as an individual and as a couple, um, and I think sometimes it could be difficult as a couple because we go through it in a different way yeah. you know you know he 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 handles and processes differently I handle and I process differently very differently, very differently. <laughs> but um it also helps us too to say okay you know what if someone say comes into our life group and has like Caffrey's personality 
then I can understand that person a little bit better, you know, and vice versa. Right. So always just using it as a way to say, okay, you know what, how is what we're going to go, what we're going through right now, how is that going to benefit somebody else? Yeah. And attacking it from that standpoint instead of being so like self-absorbed into our own mess and being like, oh my God, yeah. like we're never going to get through this. Yeah. God gives us the strength to get through it and it's for his, his glory. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I love what you said about you each have your individual walks, you each mm -hmm. have your individual personalities, but at the end of the day, you come together to pray, and that is the key. Um, marriage couples, if you're listening, take notes, because I'm taking notes. Um, no matter what we have as individuals, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you guys come together, the Bible says that we're one, and that's awesome to hear that. Um, this next point is actually my favorite point. Um, Pastor Abe talked about Pain becomes your platform. Yeah. That is huge. Um, you know, um, and I learned this from Pastor Abe. A lot of people want to arrive, mm. but they never want to go through the pain. Ooh. They think that, I just want to get to the platform, whether it be this platform, whether it be the platform of life, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And they don't understand that there is a process. Even, even for Jesus himself, before he even started his ministry, he went through the process. Mm -hmm. He went through the desert. And um, one of the things that Pastor Abe said that I love, and, 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 and I love this word, is empathy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what makes us strong as Christians, as we, men and women of God, is the empathy that we have for people. And the moment that you lose your empathy is the moment that you're in trouble. Um, because we need to care. Our job is to care. Our job is to pray. Our job is to reach. And I love what Pastor A was saying about empathy. Um, I wanted to ask Pastor Angela a question. Um, Pastor Abe said something that is powerful. And he said, faith that hasn't been tested cannot be trusted. Right. And I'll say that again. That is just yeah. powerful. Amen. Faith that hasn't been tested cannot be trusted. Pastor Angela, what does that mean to you? Gosh, that means, I mean, I can't say that I'm strong until I've had my moments of weakness and overcome something, right? Yeah. I can't say I have faith in God until I've had a, a choice and a chance not to be faithful to God, yeah. right? So I feel like that phrase was so powerful because in our moments in life when our faith is being tested, and we are going through moments of pain. Um, it's hard to buy the scripture in James that Pastor Abe opened up with where it says count it all joy because yeah. most people are like, I'm not feeling joy. I'm not feeling it right now. So how can I, in this pain, crack a smile or even look at it from a different perspective? It's that God is with you, with you and you have to trust and have faith in him that there is something which is purpose, right, on the other side of this, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is a reason why you're going through it. And, you know, in the times when you're feeling low like that, just know that you are being refined in the fire, that something is going to be bright and shiny at the end. And it's probably a testimony. And just like Eric has been saying, I know it's hard to hear when you're going through it, but the purpose of your pain is to bless some other family. Yeah. It's to bless yeah. some other person. Yeah. It may be to bless your immediate family, but it is for somebody else. Yeah. And, wow. and that is the beauty of being tested yeah. in your yeah. faith. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the blessing goes beyond you. Yeah. It goes out to somebody else. Wow. Amen. That's so powerful. And, you know, pain uh, shouldn't be wasted. Mm -hmm. You know, God puts us or allows us for that certain situation and pain shouldn't be wasted. If, if you waste the pain, you wasted it for no reason. And that's how I look at it now. You know, if I'm going through a situation, I know there's a reason um, why I'm going through it. You know, earlier you guys mentioned about like uh, praying together. When I, when I have a fight with my wife, I learned the secret. I'm not even gonna get into the argument anymore. Mm -hmm. I just give it to God. Mm -hmm. I, I tell her, you know what? I'm gonna tell God on you now. Because there's no point, you know. I'm not going to win. I don't want to argue. So when you guys were talking, you just reminded me of that. I told my wife, hey, I'm just going to tell God on you. Yeah. God's going to handle good. you. And she's that's like, good. had nothing to say. And I was like, yes. Right. So that's the thing now, you know. I learned that. Um, and, and her and I have gone through a lot of pain and going from a divorce to being married again. So now, you know, I've learned from that season. I learned from that pain. And, um, and, and that's also, I want to ask you guys the same question. The same question as 
Pastor Angela about trusted faith. Right. What do you guys think about that? Um, so there's a saying that, that, uh, that entrepreneurs say, entrepreneurs will jump off of a cliff and build a plane on the way down. Um, and that's, our, that's faith. Yeah. That's faith. So Christians have to be willing to jump Come all the way in and not seeing the end result. God isn't showing us the end result in our visual, but we know it's there because of what we read. And if we believe the Bible is truth, right. then we should be able to jump and then let him equip us on the way down. So I think a lot of times we're, we're like, well, I, should, I, should, I, should I do this? Should I do this? And you're, you're hesitating and you're backsliding. And well, if I do this, then I got to give this up. And if I do this and I give this up, that means your faith is not tested. You're not testing your faith. You have to jump. And then let God equip you with the, with, the, with the stuff that you need and to fortify you on the way down so that you're ready for the kingdom. Wow. That's so good. Um, yeah, and definitely, you know, like when going back to what Pastor Abe said that really touched me is like when you, you know, when you do understand is when you don't need faith anymore, right? And so, um, you know, coming to be okay with, I'm a control freak. So, <laughs> you know, Having the clarity, having the understanding um, is like, it makes me like, oh my goodness, I, I'm anxious and like, what's going on? Um, and I feel like even right now in this season, that's what God is dealing with. Because how can I give all glory to God and be like, oh, God is so good and all this stuff if I didn't have to rely totally upon him and not on me? You know, and the Bible says that he gives you a peace that surpasses understanding. Mm -hmm. So when you get into a situation and you're like, okay, you know what? I, I don't get this. I like, this is kind of, you know, making me crazy. Um, you know, I have to say, okay, you know what, God, I'm going to go back to your word. You know, let's go back to the beginning um, and give me fresh, you know, revelation. Because even um, Pastor Abe was, you know, giving uh, family life group training. And he basically was saying, like, how can you give um, your, you know, your group or, you know, somebody that you're talking to as a leader a fresh revelation if you yourself don't have one? That's good. And, um, again, going back to being a leader, you can get into routine. You can get into, you know, doing um, everything, checking them off, you know, checking the, checking the, the boxes off. Um, but are you getting that fresh revelation? And so I definitely believe that, you know, when it comes to um, losing control, not understanding everything, that's when you activate faith. And faith is an action word. By the way, faith is not just like, oh, I'm just going to wait on God. Like, you have to move, you know, and your feeling follows your action. Your, wow. your, your action doesn't follow your feeling. Yeah. Sure. So making sure you got that too. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Erica, Caffrey, Pastor Angela. Everybody out there listening, thank you so much for being part of the breakdown. I want to remind you, no more church at night. This Sunday, we have church at 9, 11, and 1 p.m. in Spanish. Don't forget, we have home cover that's open for you every day. We love you. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We want to meet you. Whenever, if, you know, if you don't want to come, if you want to be social distancing or whatever it is and you want to watch from home, don't forget, we love your emojis. Put your emojis on there. We love you. Have a wonderful night.